Hello, can you hear me? Nice. Uh, hello, I'm Slava. I'm heading Unity SBD team. Uh, I'm still a bit nervous. Give me two minutes to calm down. So uh, I have 17 minutes, and uh, all my presentation is built on like the most common mistakes and questions asked by developers, day by day, uh, like year by year. And I'll start my presentation uh, with uh, this slide. So I decided to add this game production phases chart instead of agenda. So uh, we have concept, oops, <laughs> we have concept, pre-production, production, soft launch, and operation. Uh, somewhere here we have a lunch. And my presentation will be about these two stages, soft launch and uh, operation and post-production. Uh, so basically, when we speak about that, there are two main points when you should differently think about that. First one is actually before you launch your game, before you have your game featured, before you have like a big spite of people who uh, come in your game and play it a lot. Uh, and it's important because uh, it's pretty difficult to achieve, like even if your game is pretty viral, it's pretty difficult to achieve so big audience uh, like after a game was featured already uh, and when you just starting to pay for your users uh, it would be like not so smart to not monetize people from day one when game is big popular growing and uh, like some organic users are coming <coughs> so while you on soft launch while, while your game was on soft launch how to measure uh, your video ads implementation success. Because uh, usually while you're on soft launch, your analytics look like this. Like you have quite a f like very few players, I don't know, not many sessions, and even eCPM, which is the most common metric for all the marketers to, like, to measure rewarded video success, it looks pretty insane because numbers of impressions are low, uh, and keep in mind that ECPM is uh, average re of revenue per thousand impressions, and if you generate, I don't know, 200 of them every day, like ECPM could be, I don't know, from zero to thousand, whatever. Uh, means you have to have different clear metrics how to understand if video ads will work properly in your game when you will be launched publicly and you will receive uh, like Expect a reasonable and expectable amount of money. Uh, so first metric I really promote heavily. So and actually I reused the slide I showed it uh, during PGC in London this year. Uh, first metric is which, like what part of your DIU are watch videos? We name this engagement rate, uh, and this metric is extremely important. I'll show you some slide later, but. Uh, if while soft launch you really understand that only 30% of your players watching videos, it really open you an ability to improve your implementation, like add some more points, correct your message, I don't know, change reward value. I'll I'll speak a bit more about what kind of problems could be found uh, if you will di digest it. But finally, if you will just improve your integration slightly, a little bit, like work on it, uh, like you work on your b game balance, like wor you work on your art, like you work on your everything. Like spend some time on improving this, and even if you will increase it just to 60%, which is pretty much achievable, you will see it on the next slide, uh, your revenue will grow simply twice. Uh, like here's a pretty re recent numbers, I took the screenshot uh, yesterday at night, uh, this is a distribution of ga games in our network. Like it's, I don't know, 150,000 games in our network now. And the, here is a distribution of use rate by buckets. Uh, and as you can see, like only 20% of games have this engagement rate, this percent of people watching videos less than like up to 20%. Uh, in average, like 50% of games have uh, engagement rate between 20 and 50, and 
27% games means like almost one third of all the games uh, have it between 50 and 80. And I would say that the most successful games actually have like 50 plus or even 45 plus. Means our recommendation is just to try to achieve like 50, 60% engagement rate before you launch your game. And basically the average number for all the network we have is 29% now. Uh, another very important metric is how many ads are watched per every user. Uh, of course, it should be tracked by every placement, like, like by every session, because of course there are some players who never watch ads. There are some of them who watch like one a day. There are some of them who watch, I don't know, ten a day. Uh, and Actually, when you realize, once you soft launch your game, when you realize that the only and average one ad is watched per watcher, it opens your ability again to slightly improve this metric and increase the revenue. And it, of, of course, it doesn't work the same way like uh, in the case before, when you just can improve the rate of people who are watching ads. Because uh, every, like every next video won't cost the same money, like uh, won't bring you the same revenue. Because uh, in every waterfall, like the first impression is the most expensive, second one is slightly cheaper. But anyway, like if you will improve this metric uh, and make it two or three, uh, it will increase your revenue definitely. Uh, Asking the question, do you need to achieve, I don't know, seven or ten? Uh, let's switch to this slide. Uh, again, fresh statistics from yesterday night. Uh, here's a network distribution of ads watched per watcher per day. An average, as you can see, like the biggest uh, line is like two videos a day. But the most successful games uh, are usually trying to achieve, I don't know, three to four. But it, of course, depends on your genre, depends on your session length, on uh, how many sessions a day you want to achieve as a metric of, of retention, uh, and so on. So it deep, like, deeply depends on what kind of games you make. But I would say that one or two is not good enough, definitely. Like, you have a lot of room to, like, for improvement to achieve like 3.5 or 4. And in our network, again, uh, we have average number of 2.7. It includes like small games, super big games, average games. Uh, so that's why the, the average numbers are slightly lower that I mentioned as successful integration. Uh, as an example, like I, want, I wanted to illustrate what kind of numbers are, achieve, are achievable by successful developers. Uh, there are like four examples, Dragon Boom, Recent success was featured last week. Now it's super big, exclusive with Unity ads, doing double digit thousand revenue daily. Uh, uh, Cats, like big, big success of this year. Zeptolab, really proud to work these guys. Uh, Flipmaster, like another nice game from Miniclip. Uh, I would say it's like next step after f uh, Flip Dive. And like pretty old and a bit different game, not super casual, Shooter Assassin. And average numbers of these games are the following. Like as you can see, of course I didn't check uh, the examples which will be like against my theory that the numbers could be in particular range. Of course, you can argue with me. But uh, finally, there are is minimum four super big examples, super big games which are super successful and not making money only out of ads, heavily monetized via in-app purchase. And their numbers looks like this, like 50 plus, almost 50% uh, of daily active users watching video ads. And in average, five, like 4.5 ads per day per watcher. Uh, another 
very important thing. While you soft launch your game, while you integrate the video ads, uh, we do recommend to integrate every placement and create it as a separate placement IT. Uh, on the following slides, when I will speak about how to improve your integration when your game is already launched, uh, it's kind of like required step on the day before zero, before, before the global launch, that you will use separate placement ID for every placement. Because it will help you to track every placement separately. It will help you to understand what kind of placement work, what kind of placement doesn't work. Uh, as you can see, here's like random screenshot from pretty big and successful game. And these guys use two rewarded placements. One is rewarded video, just name rewarded video. And then another is healer video. The name is Last Day on Earth from Kefir Games, which is like probably the most successful survival game on mobile now. Uh, and when these guys like implemented world video into two separate placement ideas, they was able to tune every placement separately, like increase uh, how many ads available daily per user uh, on one placement and on, on the other one. Uh, another recommendation, enable Unity Analytics. If you build your game on Unity, uh, I would say it's kind of required to enable Unity Analytics, because it's built uh, into an engine. It doesn't require any resources of your game. It, like, n it will not slow down your game at all, uh, but it will help you to track even ads metrics uh, via Unity Analytics, because we do have uh, like pretty close integration between analytics and ads. And once you will like launch your game, you will be able to track ads as well as just game metrics like retention, session, and so on. Uh, so second portion of our presentation is about building on success. What, what, what is about? Uh, once you have all your placement IDs created when you integrated video ads. Uh, and your game is launched fully. You have kind of spike out of featuring or just like organic growers or paid user acquisition, doesn't matter. But you have enough numbers to track separate placements, separate uh, video points. So you will be able to download your uh, report by placement. And then we'll realize that uh, for example, from placement one, you have 70% uh, of your revenue. From placement two, only 20. And then placement three, bring you only 10% of your revenue. Uh, what kind of things will be available to analyze? First of all, uh, you can answer yourself what is the problem with this, with, with this particular low performing placement. Either it could be wrong reward value, sorry. I mean, if player really play your game and doesn't watch ad properly from this placement, it means that you bring not enough value for, to, for the player to watch video, like to spend 30% of his life to watch video ad. Uh, another point could be currency balance. I mean, if you have one placement for gold, one placement for crystals, and users don't watch the video for crystals, means crystals are not super required on this level, or at all. Like game balance, like this kind of separate tracking could, could help you to balance your game properly uh, in a way. Uh, another reason could be like wrong message. Simply like not clear message what's going on if you will push this button. Uh, I mean, if like, on, like after, after the round, player really finished the round successfully, and it's, I don't know, some messy button with a lot of words like congratulations, push this button to double revenue, it's super natively integrated in the final screen. There are so many cases that people just skip this button because they don't see it. Like it's, I don't know, like the message on the button is wrong. Uh, or like button could be super hidden, like user experience is bad, 
uh, reward the video, interrupts, gameplay, whatever. Like, there are four key reasons why ads, could, like, like why placement could perform not well. Uh, and this is a screenshot from, from the game. Uh, these guys use Unity ads exten extensively, like using ads extensively in the game, and, uh, and ads bring them, I don't know, 50% of the revenue. And they really experiment with different placements. As you can see, they named it properly, for example, Coin Quest or Get Spin, Spin Quest. Uh, yesterday, I've tried to build like proper chart, but it was not so clear to show you something. But these guys really enable some new placements from time to time, disables some another, and checking uh, like performance, and performance really different based on placement, based on reward, uh, reward uh, value, or based on like how deep players are in the game, what kind of currency they really uh, need now. As a summary, I still have like four minutes. As a summary, uh, as I mentioned, enable analytics. Analytics is skin. Uh, if your game is built on Unity, even, even if your main analytics is, I don't know, Google, Flurry, whatever, uh, just enable it just in case, because you will have all the data inside and you will be able to build either standard or custom events to track everything, what happens with the game. Uh, and more data you have, uh, more abilities you have to improve your numbers, improve your revenue finally. Uh, placement ideas. You should like do it because uh, the time when you could just drop random integration into a game is past. Like some uh, typical mechanics are really wanted by players, really popular at the moment. Uh, some of them are not anymore. Uh, that is why we do offer you kind of value at the service, like ask us. Uh, during soft launch, after your global launch, how to improve, what kind of numbers to achieve, what kind of advices do we, do we have for your company. So come to us, write us, call us, come to our booth, and we'll help you to uh, optimize the game properly. And as a final conclusion, smart ads integration means money. Really simple. Uh, there are like very small difference between successful game and not success successful game, uh, and the rule is actually the f the same like in general in game development. If you spend enough time and you smartly think about like your game and ads as a part of your game, you will be happy and rich. If you think that ads is just some unnecessary thing, you won't succeed in in ads area. Uh, so we, so all our team will be at Unity Booth just across the hall over there. Uh, welcome to our booth. Let's speak. And do you have any questions? Any questions? We have a question over here. I'll come around. Oh, you don't get a mic. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, very good content. Uh, I have a question about. Um, uh, how to limit ads? I mean, the numbers you showed, like showing seven uh, ads per daily active user, that's quite high, right? So that that also assumes that there are many sessions, long sessions that uh, users have, so on. But what I've seen is that uh, many successful games also limit the amount of ads that you can sh see in a row. So what's the kind of uh, ideology or, or how you should do it? Uh, so first of all, there is no one answer fits all. Uh, I mean, there are so many genres, different types of games, different metrics you want to achieve in terms of retention, number of sessions a day, length of sessions, and so on. Like, uh, there were, that is why I can't come to the stage and bring you one unique answer to, like, like it's not a magic pill. Here's like here's the answer. Take this, everybody, and you will be rich. Unfortunately, no. So uh, what you should do is just track and understand how ads work in your game. Because, for example, in case of cats, uh, I, I hope, like I believe, you played the game. Uh, it was possible to watch, I don't know, million of ads in a row, and then uh, either play uh, like both player and Zeptolab was happy about that. 
Uh, for some hardcore, mid-core games, there are some really strict limitations, and like ads is available only once or twice a day. As I said, no one answer. Uh, if you have any doubts, like come to us, we will play your, I don't know, test flight build game, and then discuss what kind of implementations could be done, it, what kind of things to keep in mind in terms of your overall balance and overall like gamization structure to improve everything, like make your game successful. Also, it's worth noting that uh, there's a massive difference between opt-in ads and uh, enforced ads. So uh, we've, we have seen some games which have had like 20 or 30 daily ad views. I mean, that's not common. But then normally because the, the style of play suits a player choice to make that decision. And so I'm not saying there's no threshold where that becomes too much, but if it's user enforced, if it's user optimized, provided you've not broken the rules that some have been talking about, uh, you know, it, it therefore can be manageable. But it, like he says, every game is different. So on that note, thank you so much, sir. And no, it's been a pleasure. Um, and